Good afternoon, folks. It's Sunday. Out on the deck and enjoying the weather. Remember, Kepler's bigger than Earth, okay? Kepler 22b. And basically, it circles the star Kepler, all right? And let's go look at, uh, take you through a little data here. And there's where it sits in the sky right now. And basically, it'll rotate around the sun. Let me go ahead and show you uh, how close. Okay, basically, the distance from Mars is 185.5 million miles from Earth, okay? Uh, Kepler 22b, that known to be second Earth planet, is 3.6406 quadrillion miles, okay? Basically, it would take 371 plus half years. So basically, you'd have to divide 371 and a half, and that's how long it would probably take known technology now to get to Kepler from Earth. Theoretically, Bino and a lot of electricians could put a human being in the area of Kepler, an orbit, in a year and a half. Uh, basically, it all comes down to scientific knowledge. And NASA's not going to hire me, so I think I'll take the private money anyway and probably be more money. So here's all the other Keplers that are around Kepler-22. It's a very busy area. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you some other data. In the Constellation Sculptor sits the Kepler satellite. Basically, it is beaming away all that distance that I just showed you out into space to get an eye of Kepler-22. Okay? And this is all the data on that satellite, okay? Where it's sitting at in the sky right now in its orbits. It's got two different orbits that it goes through. And remember, this is the line of everything that's ever hit Earth that's been an object in space, okay? This is the big wormhole right here, this trajectory here, down through the eastern part of Africa and then back up. It's a very this is the magic hole, and basically, let's scroll back up through the rest of the data on Kepler. It's a spacecraft, basically, because it's a telescope out in space. It's not a satellite, but it basically is in a sense, because if it can telescope out, it can look at anything, okay? Here's one of the uh, known to be still possibly hot remnant of Kepler when it developed. Now, Kepler is bigger than the sun. You don't really notice it too much. I mean, bigger than Earth. Apologize on that. Bigger than Earth, Kepler-22b is. Okay, the sun of Kepler-22b, and basically that's how everything sits in the sky right now. So basically, this is orbiting Kepler, the star Kepler. You can always trust me on the data and the distances because I always crunch the numbers. And there's Alaraf, the sun, formal hot. Kepler-22, because basically Kepler-22 is a star, okay? It's burning at 5,500K, okay? And it basically, this is it out in space, okay? The Kepler system, the, basically the sun of it is basically up above our sun, okay? This is actually not fooling you. Basically the habitable zone is somewhat, it's not in our zone down here because it's not rotating our sun. It's Kepler-22 system. That's Kepler, the sun, Kepler-22 right there. Okay, and Kepler 22b is in what what kind of basically when they show you the sizes here, they're not really lying on it too much. Uh, Kepler 22b is is bigger. I mean, basically, this is the sizes here. Don't let you think that this is Jupiter. Okay, this is a size size differential. Okay, Kepler 22b is bigger, the planet. And then you go back to that map I showed you of all the other stuff that's around Kepler 22b. And you will see that the idea that it's a very busy area, okay? The star that it's rotating around is this. Now, it's a dying out star, and you can see basically from the lifetime of it, okay? Known satellites, 22, Kepler 22b, but there's a lot of other Keplers. You go look at that map I showed you of all the Keplers. And here's the Hertzberg of it, and it gets pretty busy, okay? So what I'll do is I'll blow in on it, and there you go, Kepler of the Sun. The sun of it, 22, is a little bit smaller than Alraf. 
and a little bit smaller than our sun, okay? Alaraf is bigger than the sun. Formal hot is bigger. And all this stuff is there, and it's in alignment up in space. Let me go ahead and zoom this map up. It's kind of important to know where all this stuff is sitting in. When I get a zoom in, you'll be able to see, okay? This is Kepler-22 right here, the first red dot. Then we have the sun, okay? You can see in there, the sun is there. And I'm gonna zoom it up to 800 so you realize it a little bit better. And there's Alaraf and there's Formal Hot. And this is the super giant Spain sequence that I keep telling everybody about, okay? And it's all, this is all factual scientific data, okay? This stuff all exists, okay? Astronomers basically punch on all their information into the uh, supercomputers and it all gets locked in and we get all this information and there you go. You should be able to see the sun now. The idea that that's the sun right there. And then that's Kepler above. As I showed you on the picture, you got to back up because I already X'd that out. Now there's Alaraf, there's Formal Hawk, and then it's the Supergiant's main sequence. And that's why we get all that light because there's way more than just the sun's light shining down on Earth. And right now, lately, in the stereo play of Earth and its orbit around the sun, you're getting to be a lot of heat from other stars way out in space and basically they're waking up volcanoes and so forth. So we're in a weird area of play in our circle orbit around the sun, which we know we rifle and we're starting to beginning to wonder if we really do have it down to exact science, if we have such a flat circular stereo play. We could maybe be off a little bit, maybe a little bit this, that, maybe there's a little bit of a bean shape or a, a a nut shape to our orbit because we do know that the known second moon of Earth basically orbits in a circle, but it also orbits not in a flat stereo circle. It does kind of like a hump, like a beam. So in accordance with the Earth, this is Earth here, and that's where Kepler-22b sits at this current time up with all the other planets. Way out in space, you just have to go to the distances that I showed you. And we sit in space like that. And you back this up and look at that. Basically, I think I can just pop back to it. I think I had it right there. Well, that's the distance. And that's all the objects that are around it. That's the satellite that basically keeps an eye on it. That's one of the supernovas. And there basically is the sun, Kepler-22b, with all the stars and, I mean, all the planets around it. Okay? Those are basically planets around the star, Kepler, right there. That's the... The star Kepler, the sun, basically the sun Kepler, okay? So it's a star and all these planets out there around it. And basically you back up the map to see all that stuff that's around there. And we are here at Formal Hot and the map of the sun in Alaraf. And then that's what you'll know when you look at those pictures that I was showing you of NASA Navy. And basically I'll pop to a live shot of Navy. And basically, that's why the sun has these other objects. Basically, they are a hell of a long ways away, but the electrical magnetism in the sun rays, sun's a wave, and it is an electrical magnetical wave, and this stuff is all out there. Now remember, Kepler is a little bit smaller than the sun, okay? Formal hot is big, and there's other suns that are 38, up to 74 times the size of the sun, and yes, there are some super giant stars, dwarfs out there that are like 380 and on up bigger and there is an object in space that is basically just remember 747 because there's an object in space that is 747 times the size of the sun. I'm just not sure if it's a hot star or if it's a cold dead planet and we do know about the meatball. Watch my last few videos and you'll see all the stuff on that. There's tons of stuff in space folks. The kids need to be re-educated re in grade school about all the stuff that is out there. So that they'd be hungry to educate the world about more that's out there if they were to go to work for some kind of either NASA or private space agency. And a uh, president there is transferred to France after a shooting, so that's a little bit interesting. Uh, a lot of interest is basically the Chinese have got their new reconditioned uh, Russian aircraft carrier that they bought from the Russians and they've reconditioned it and they got it out at sea and basically there's uh, action with uh, we got in China launched some stuff on Friday I believe it was a nice 
hole. Or I guess basically they, they lit off on the 14th. And all. so basically the, they took off today with theirs. Okay, and then the German basically using Soyuz rockets. So this information there. So anyway, the other one shows a lot better deal for the, the rest of it, so we're getting a lot. Somebody's hurting for money. So the actual is they're getting away with it a lot cheaper than us. Got this website for you, and good luck on zooming on in on anything far off in the distance because they don't like you playing around looking at to see if anything's actual factual. So have good time zooming in on these shots. You can do it, you just have to work at it. And here we go, we'll try to zoom in on what we can get out there way off in the distance. See how real it looks. But anyhow, keep an eye on everything, ladies and gentlemen. Watch the tracks. Always follow the money and always follow the tracks. It's looking pretty good so far. Somewhat looks realistic. <clears throat> but keep an eye on it all. Don't be afraid to zoom in. Because things look a little funky sometimes. So anyway, their excuse will be that they have to meld pictures together. Whatever. They don't like you looking off very far off deep. Alright? Just investigate everything. Do a lot of zooming. There's all kinds of tools out there. Check the pictures out. Okay? I gave you the website. Also check the photographs from actual NASA site. First off, I don't want to move the screen too fast because it'll blur it up, but you can imagine. Well, let's see if I can just move around real fast and show all the quakes in the last 14 days. And then also down on the South Pole, there's stuff down there too. It's interesting how when I try to shoot a video, how tough it gets to be able to manipulate around. And it's not the computer. So there you go. A lot of stuff. 6.4 down there and so forth. We got fresh. We got a pretty good size one up in Alaska. We got a 4.8 up there. Or over, basically, apologize, basically. But the end of the Aleutian Islands over towards, I guess, Japan, basically. Actually, the southern part of Russia. Across from Alaska. So... Put a bunch of stuff on here real fast. Boom, 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 boom. And then we will try to rake back through. The, that's about the most equivalent. We had a 5.4 down in Panama area. Of recent. And the West Coast is getting pretty good again. And they had a 4.0 off the coast up there. It looks like off of Oregon. So lots of activity. And the quakes have been 5.0 like crazy. Let's look at the records. Just remember, the rising and falling of all this electrical energy and all the objects that go through space, it's all a gigantic magnetic machine. It's an all a big electric motor, all of space, folks. It take 371 years, and I could get there in a year and a half. I know how to do it. Kepler 22b, pretty much known the second planet, folks. The second Earth, the second planet, because the idea that we don't really know if we can live on these other ones. Okay? We know we ain't going to live on Mars, I don't believe. Mercury, absolutely not. Saturn, absolutely not. Gets too damn close to the sun. Okay? And actually wrong. Actually, Saturn, we probably could on the moons. The idea that the actual factual, maybe Venus not. But Mercury, absolutely not. Gee, all these suns, I wonder why we're having a drought. Just like a woman when she's got her back naked. Pretty damn sexy. This is what the U.S. Air Force and all the branches of the military want to be able to know what it looks like if they have to shoot it down. No matter what, the rocks are firmly embedded on Mars. As you notice, they don't pop up when the deal rolls over it, but they do push down pretty good. That means there's gravity there. 